Hello everyone, uh, my name is Alan Banks, I'm the CCO of Road Dental Laboratory and I'm today with uh, Thomas Kuhn who is uh, who spends his life on the road um, helping doctors with Crohn surgery chair side and uh, you, we've been doing this for about five years now. Five years, yeah. And you've probably been to, I don't know, four or five hundred of these. Yes. And I, and I figure after more. four or five hundred you know some stuff, so. Yeah, we've, um, we've definitely experience the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, Yeah, you know. What we're gonna do is go through what, um, what Thomas does as a pre-flight to surgery. And uh, the goal usually is to get in, fly in the night before, go to the office, yeah, so meet with the, the doctor, office, you know, right. buy, buy an appointment, and go through Chrome. This is for maybe a first time doctor, second time doctor. Third time, we'll do a little more of this in the morning, um, sure. especially on a tricky case. But right. first time doctor, you fly in, you go into their office, hopefully at the end of the day or in the evening, and, and what happens? So we, we um, you know, obviously you can introduce yourself at the front desk, they don't know who you are, can't just walk in the door, but um, you introduce yourself uh, to say, hey, you know, did you receive your Chrome box uh, with, with your components? And uh, the, yeah, they're very excited about it, and obviously they, um, they received it before and they've opened it up. So I go, and, I, and he's probably with patients, so I go and I say, well, where is it? And then I'll open the box up and make sure that everything is there. So I'll look and uh, take the components apart, take it out of the box, the pin guide. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing, the, the, I'm guessing the goal is to do this with the doctor with and the, the doctor. assistant. So, yeah. so you guys get on the same page. Exactly. So what things are called and right. what they're used for and then kind of get everybody on the same page. That exactly. way they know the next morning what right. they're doing. Yeah. Um, then I, I just kind of make sure that all the components has what it needs and nothing has been broken off when the doctor opened the box up, because sometimes things, things happen. So we've got the carrier, we've got the, um, the fixation base, um, the osteotomy guide, with the OEM sleeves, in this case BioRizon, uh, and then we have a rapid appliance and a temporary appliance that, uh, that the patient's gonna wear, if all goes well. And then last but not least, but very important, we have a backup denture, so I always check for that because it's happened before that we didn't have that and we had to make one. Yeah. And that's another conversation for another day. Um, we also print, we also have the uh, printed models of what the patient looks like. Right. Um, very important to ask the doctor, has any dental work been done mm -hmm. since between the planning and the day of surgery? Because? Uh, because if that has happened, the pin guide is not gonna seat on the model. It has happened several times and the doctor's going to be like oh this doesn't fit the patient's mouth and then i i look at the existing model and see that there's a filling that was done. filling now and maybe in extraction right. probably not that yeah, big a deal not a big deal but anything additive is going to be a problem exactly yeah. if, if there's a filling that was done then obviously and if the model is, was broken prior and they fixed it an, an incisal edge it's not going to fit right so we want to make sure that this 100% fits there. Yeah. Then the next thing, um, you know, I go through the components with the doctor and say, um, this is gonna be uh, cold uh, sterilized, um, and we'll put this in the morning off in the sterilization. Right, no autoclave. No, no autoclave, because the components that's inside of the plungers well, they're a plastic. They're all, they're all metal now on the right. fifth generation. Right. But, but if right. you do autoclave it, it could. There's be, there's actually cement. Something that, something happens because we there. cement it and yeah. it debonds. It could make so it this when you pull on this during surgery, you could pull the whole housing out, which is not the end of the world. But right. it's so no it's not cold no cold 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 for everything in the morning. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, this the next thing we do is that we make sure that the doctor opens this up, which is our surgery mat. The surgeon mat will tell us what implants is going to be placed. And then I ask the doctor, do you have the implants that's going to be placed for that day and backup implants? So backup implants, you know, if we go size, a size wider, longer, etc. So, so rescue implants, which rescue we're, implants. we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Exactly. A little later yeah, episode yeah. that we're, we're going to do on this chair side. Right. Thing. But, but so, okay, so implants, rescue implants. implants and and then, then also the abutments. Yeah, the MUAs. The MUAs and the temporary cylinders. For the case, right. Um, right. We also and, and different angles, different angulations on the abutment. So on this, it specify that in this specific case, we have a zero degree, we have three seventeenths and one thirty. Okay. So I want to actually see the components because it's happened to me before where the doctor said, "Oh, I have it all in that box." Yeah. And the morning of, 
we laid it out something's missing. and something's missing. You put it on this little surgery right, mat. Right, we put it on the surgery mat. And then, what and then the doctor looked at me and says, I used that implant yesterday afternoon <laughs> for somebody else in the apartment for yeah, somebody else. Good, and good. it happened. So he right. called the rep up and tried to get it. So take, so now you call, so call take an inventory. Take an take inventory. inventory. Okay. Make sure you have the components. All right. I uh, talked to the assistant as well because during, during the surgical process, the, the assistant has heart stops. She kind of the lifeline manages the, the components with the third assistant or if I'm there, you know, we'll do that in advisory. And, um, and then kind of set expectations for the doctor. Yeah. This is what's gonna happen. This is what I see on the surgery mat. I see that we have extraction to do. There's a lot of infection on the case. Um, he's aware of it, which is kind of reiterate things so that when we come in the next morning, right. everybody is bringing the their same A game yeah, to, to it. And, uh, and that's, that's it, the pre, pre-flight. So when, you, when you assemble all these components, you show the doctor that the fixation base and the pin guide go fits together, together. Yes. fit together, and they should be a nice passive fit, and if right. they don't, then it's probably the chrome lock plunger that's right. not in. And the, the correct way to open the, the chrome lock is to twist, right. to turn, is to turn it and pull at the same time. And that's the way to, to handle it. Push, pull, and turn at the same time. You can do it with the hemostat during surgery, but that's the best way to do it. Open up the plungers, and then of course, test make them. sure test it, make sure that it fits. Everything works here, positively, and then with the carrier, again, it works positive, and, uh, nice and that's it, that's passive. Yeah. Um, the the other try, thing, I try the osteotomy guide. Then we do the osteotomy guide, and make sure that the kit that the doctor has, that the keys, if it's a key system, works with our guide. Now, it's a, in this case, it's an OEM uh, sleeve that gets cemented inside of the osteotomy yeah. guide, so that I know right. will really work. Can't, can't be wrong. Right, and now, but, but if it's a different system, you have a one guide system, make sure that the keys actually go through, or the, oh, drills, the drills go through. If and it's a, a no, system. Yeah, and it's yeah. not passive. Right. Because when you generate heat, it's going to get stuck. Yeah, you want to have and you're going to break a little bit of passivity. Right. In fact, there's usually Absolutely. a little bit of wiggle in there, and that's okay. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. So the other thing is, is that in the kit, there should be um, fixation pins hmm. that comes uh, with the gut with the case for the first for the first case right in front of you. Right. So this little kit, kit. Um, is your fixation uh, kit with uh, a short roll, which is 20 millimeters, and um, we'll talk about the the application of this. In a later later edition, but there's the green is usually the short and the white is the long, yep. the long pins, and it specified right on the third on this image right here what pins in what sequence you're going to use. That's part of the inventory, right? And that's part of the inventory. Yep. And then obviously your drill is going to fit into the pin, the pin, um, I see the, the fixation base right there. You're going to drill three quarters after the serrated. We'll talk about the surgical part of it and then obviously put your pin through that and just push it and then you can tap it all in at the end. We'll talk about that as well. And that's it, that's basically it. And we also wanna make sure that we have Stellar. Stellar, um, you know, for your, right. um, yeah, your Stellar for the, for the, um, um, for your fixation on the, uh, the temporary cylinders. All right, and, so, um, so a recap yeah. is make sure everything fits together. Right, make just sure like, that you have the kit. Yeah. Make sure you have the kit. Make sure everything fits together. Everything plunges together and stacks. Exactly. And Passively, also your implants. Make sure you have your implants Plenty and your components. components. Yep. Make Cylinders. sure you have your pin, your fixation kit, your pins and drills. Yes. Your looting material, which is stellar. Your backup denture, if you ordered one. Right. And then I think there's also a bite in there. A backup, yeah, there's a bite. There's a backup, backup bite. bite. Yep, there's a bite. Assuming there's you don't use that too often, it's a backup right. as if you have to float the prosthetic. Exactly. If something goes wrong, wrong and, and, and you have this. So that's what that's for. All right. So that's um, your pre flight. Uh, another another component here that docs always ask me is that they have the bone model, bone reduction model, and then um, you know this kind of replicates this, in and um, it it always looks that the reduction is far greater than what's actually going to happen, but um, once the teeth are extracted, it's fairly minimal. Uh, and you'll see um, with our cases we've been sending out in the last month or so that the 
uh, the bone reduction guide has a line in it, and you, right. can, you can tell where the bone reduction is going to be. It won't be quite as much of a surprise when the tissue is reflected. Right. Yeah. Right. Kind of a, so that that's it in a uh, nutshell. When you, when we come uh, pre pre surgery uh, the day day before to make sure everything's good, and um, like I said, we've done hundreds of these uh, with some of the best doctors in the U.S. and some international guys, and so. Um, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to go to a new doctor and, and see the excitement of doing his first Chrome case. And it's definitely um, unique. It's absolutely unique. So you know when you have a good product and, and uh, it works every time. That's the summary of the pre-flight. <laughs>